Hi, Martin here with another video. And today I'm going to give window users who've just switched over to Mac 10 tips to help them get used to the new platform. So let's get started. Okay, so firstly, one of the biggest differences between a Mac and a Windows is the secondary click. So by default, this is set to hold the control key and then click. Obviously coming from Windows, you'd be used to just right clicking in order to be able to bring up that secondary menu. Um, so what I usually suggest is head to System Preferences, head to Trackpad, and then you can actually change your secondary click to click in the bottom right corner. So if you've been used to using a Windows machine for a long time, it just really helps you to get accustomed to using a Mac. So next up is menu icons. Now, uh, typically within Windows, you have your menu items along the top edge of the program window. But for Mac OS, this is actually part of the operating system and actually comes right at the top uh, in that top margin of the desktop. So this menu bar will change dependent on what application you have open. So instead of it being at the top of the application, it'll be right at the top as part of the OS. Okay, next up, along the bottom of the Mac, you will see a row of icons that is essentially where you would usually find the Windows taskbar. So it does things fairly similarly. This is still where you're gonna be able to open up applications and things like that. However, there are a few key differences. So the dock is split into two sections. So this first section, or what we call the left-hand section, um, is dedicated to app and system utilities like your system preferences here. And then you'll see this very thin line. And on the other side of that is where you'll find your document icon, okay? So you can customize this dock to meet your daily needs. You can take applications out, you can add applications in, and the same, you can make add your files and folders over here on the right hand side. Okay, next we're gonna talk about minimizing and maximizing windows. So each window on Mac has three buttons in the top left hand corner. The red button closes an application, well, kind of, but we'll talk about that later in the video. The yellow is the minimize application. So when you hit that, it will minimize down to the right section of the dock. And if you click on the icon, it will maximize back out. Uh, lastly, you have the green icon, which will maximize the window, making it full screen and actually taking over the top bar and the dock at the bottom. Okay, next, I just spoke about the minimize and maximize buttons. So the red icon, I spoke about closing an application. Now from Windows, you'd hit that X on your application screen and it will quit that application. On Mac, what it actually does is close the window. So if I hit that X, great, looks like Safari's all closed. However, if I go down into my dock, you can see the small dot underneath the application. That means the application is actually still running. So if I click on it again, you can see it instantly opens. There's no loading because it's already open. If we want to quit an application, you have two choices. You can go to Safari and then quit Safari and that will fully close the application. Or if you hit that X and it's still got the dot in the uh, dock, then you can control click or right click as we changed in the system preferences earlier and then select quit and that will fully quit the application. Okay, so coming from Windows, you may also have used split view quite a bit where you could have windows side by side. So we can do the same on a Mac using tile view. So what you need to do is click and hold the green button and then you have an option to enter full screen, tile the window to the left or tile the window to the right. So if I hit tile window to the left, it will then show my other open windows that I can select to be on the other side. So um, you can only have two windows side by side, unlike the four that you can have on Windows. So to make getting around your Mac or MacBook easier and getting it to do what you want, it is a really good idea to try and learn some of the most common trackpad gestures. So this is usually based around essentially the number of fingers that you're gonna use on that Mac trackpad. So the easiest way to get accustomed to this is to actually use the video clips of the gestures in the Apple menu. So if we head to system preferences 
and then head to trackpad. What you can do is each one you look at, you can see that you've got a video here. So if we've got that bottom right, it's showing us what we can do on that bottom right corner. We can also go to more gestures and then whenever we hover over an option, you get a video on this right hand side showing you that gesture. So like Windows, Mac takes advantage of a whole host of keyboard shortcuts for your frequently needed actions. So the key thing to keep in mind when coming from Windows is that the command key on a Mac is what usually replaces the control key. So for example, if you want to copy and paste instead of control C and control V, you're gonna use command C and command V. Um, similarly, we also have command Z for undo. So you can head to the shortcut section in the keyboard part of system preferences to familiarize yourself with these shortcuts. Okay, next tip, tip number nine is taking screenshots. So the Mac operating system actually has a great screenshot to tool uh, that Windows kind of finally caught up with using the uh, snipping tool. So on Mac, you press Command, Shift and three, and then what that does is take a screenshot of the entire screen. So it'll pop up here in the right hand corner. You can click on it to um, do some light editing and then it'll automatically be added to your desktop. If you just wanna take a screenshot of part of the screen, you hit Command, Shift and four. That will change your cursor into a target icon, click and drag, and then the same process applies for that section that you've taken a screenshot of. Okay, lastly, here we are, tip number 10, and this is all to do with Spotlight. So Mac doesn't have the Windows kind of always displaying search box, but what it does have up here in the near the top right-hand corner is the always displaying magnifying glass icon. This is the Spotlight search. So this is the search function built into a Mac, and it's actually quite powerful, but at its basic level, when you click, you can search for applications, documents, and also look up information from the web. So if I go ahead and search for Safari, then I can open it up in here. It'll also show me some searches that I might want to do, any files that have the word Safari in it as well. There's actually a number of different things that you can do, including calculations, currency conversion, finding the weather, and checking sports scores. So there you have it, that's 10 tips for the Windows user that is switching over to a Mac. So I hope this has been useful and really helps you adjust to the Mac experience. And if you have enjoyed the video, please give it a like, comment below and subscribe for more. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.